Hello, my name's Ben Lindley, Estimating Manager at Japanese Knotweed Limited. This video has been produced as a practical guide to help you in the identification of this stuff, Japanese knotweed. This plant presents a property risk and therefore it's advisable that you know what it looks like. Once you have identified it, it's advisable to contact us where we can provide advice and removal. Japanese knotweed, Latin name Flopia japonica, was introduced to the UK in the 19th century. It is therefore a non-native plant. Other species, such as dwarf knotweed and giant knotweed, have also been introduced here. Interpollination between these species has then resulted in hybrids, such as Flopia expohemica, which you can see behind me. A very impressive plant. For the purpose of identification in this video, we will concentrate on Japanese knotweed. Although all the species have similar characteristics, they are invasive and are a risk to property. OK, let's take a look at this plant and the key characteristics to help you identify it. We'll start with looking at knotweed when it's most recognisable, in full leaf during the summer. The presence and height of the knotweed comes from its cane type stem growth. The stem growth of knotweed is its key identifying characteristic. In the growing season the stems are green, often with a reddish tinge and spotting. If snapped or cut you can see the stem is hollow. The stems have nodes and from these nodes the buds are produced. This is the key bit. Knotweed produces one bud per node. This produces a zigzag type stem growth, an alternate pattern of leaves, not mirror symmetrical. The knotweed leaf is a heart shape, with a pointed end and typically a lush green. The leaves lead to a lot of misidentification. A common mistake is bindweed. If I hold the two up together, the difference is fairly obvious. And the giant knotweed hybrid, Fallopia expohemica. You can see the similarity with the Japanese knotweed leaf, but the hybrid is bigger, with more frilly edges. Around about August time, the knotweed comes out into flower, and this makes it even more recognisable. The knotweed forms white clusters of flowers, and these are known as panicles. There's actually only the female form of the plant in the UK, and therefore there's no viable seed produced. But it can be pollinated from other knotweed species and hybrids. Japanese knotweed is an herbaceous perennial plant. This means its leaves and stems die down at the end of the growing season and it grows for more than two years. When the plant dies back for the winter, it is at its most difficult to recognise. Often the only identifier is the dead brown stems, which can remain standing from successive growing seasons. Now that we can better identify the aerial growth, we can have a look at the more troublesome parts of the plant, the bits that lie under the ground. The crown is the root hub to each cluster of stems and has a lot of fibrous root growth for moisture and nutri nutrient gathering. Over many years of growth, crowns become very large, hard and woody. It is commonly known that mature crowns can survive burning. The rhizome is the underground stems of the plant. The rhizome is, to pardon the pun, the root of the problem when it comes to Japanese knotweed. The rhizome extends underground, producing roots and shoots from its nodes which in turn form crowns. If broken, the rhizome is capable, capable of vegetative reproduction from pieces as small as your little fingernail. Rhizome may be thinner than the pencil or as thick as your arm. It's also not that easy to identify unless it's broken. And then it displays its bright orange coloration. Unfortunately though, many other plants have roots of the same coloration. So if in doubt, please contact us. We hope you found this video useful. For more information on our treatment methods, go to www.japaneseknotweed.co.uk. You can also contact us if you have a knotweed problem and need it removed at inquiries at knotweed.co.uk.